Can you give us an example of a disorganized offender, Professor Ron? Yes, uh, probably several. Uh, Andrew Kanan, who killed, ultimately ended up killing uh, Gianni, Gianni Versace, hard to say. Um, he was actually a spree killer. He was not a serial killer. A, ser a serial killer will kill and have time off in between kills. A few weeks, a month, several months, several years, like Andrew Ridgway, the, uh, the Green River serial killer. Pardon me if I get the name wrong. Those are serial killers. Andrew Kanan was a spree killer. He had no cooling off period. He went from site to site to site killing people. He was from San Diego and Johnny Versace was in Florida and he killed like 10 people in between. He just kept going and going and going. Now, it may have taken him two or three days to get to change locations, but he never stopped. So why was he disorganized? What were some of the things that he left messy that ultimately got <laughs> The him? crime scenes, mm -hmm. his suicide, I, everything. Everything about him was disorganized. He was maybe a thrill seeker. I mean, I don't know much about him um, himself, but uh, other than what I saw in the news as it happened, um, switch one, uh, switch to uh, Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. He was messy. He would go in and murder and cut up and maim. I heard he took out eyeballs, put in uh, occult symbols all over the place. Not that he was necessarily into that stuff or not, but you know, they didn't try him for that. They tried him for murder and, they, and he uh, died in prison um, at 52, I believe. So I recently. just found that out yeah. recently. Yeah. But the, uh, the point being that he was disorganized in that he didn't care where he made his mess, who he made his mess with, cleaning up his mess, crossing his tracks. We knew where he came from. We knew how he got in and we knew how he got out. Access and egress is, is the words we would use. Access getting in, egress getting out. He was just a mess. Who else can I think of? Uh, Kenneth Bianchi and Andrew, uh, I can't remember, the, the Hillside Stranglers, they, they were cousins. Um, they were not, they, again, dump sites. They would kill them and then dump them on the, on the, the sides of the road. I think it was the, the two or the 134 or something like that, somewhere here in Southern California. Um, they just dumped them, just dumped their bodies. They didn't care. We found traces of uh, carpet fibers, which is one of the things that led to their downfall, if you will, because we were able to, as we said earlier, match the carpet fibers, two fibers in their trunk and stuff like that, um, ha hair, things like that. Trace evidence is what we call it. So um, I consider anybody that leaves anything, not, not anything behind, but preponderance of stuff behind. We have one of the first principles of criminalistics is Locard's theory of transference. What you bring in, you will leave a little of you, and you will leave a little, and bring a little of what you have back. We will have this carpet fiber on our feet when we walk out. It will have stuff from our shoes and, and our skin cells that have shed, hair follicles. We will be in this room. Not necessarily forever, hopefully they clean eventually. Just kidding. But there's the, it's, it's, it, Locard's theory is the, the founding principle of criminalistics is that there's always a transference. There's always an exchange. So you look for that exchange and then you look for the matches. 